Within our bodies, there's a delicate balance between clotting and bleeding. The clotting cascade is like an intricate dance, involving various proteins and factors. Anticoagulants disrupt this dance by targeting specific steps in the cascade, making sure clots don't form unnecessarily. The use of anticoagulants has a fascinating history. Ancient civilizations, like the Egyptians and Greeks, used natural substances like leeches and willow bark to prevent clotting during surgeries and medical treatments. Let's thank them for laying the foundation. Fast forward to the present, where we have a treasure trove of modern anticoagulants. From warfarin to direct oral anticoagulants, these medicines have transformed patient care. But what sets them apart, and what are their benefits and challenges? Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we will be discussing anticoagulants. Anticoagulants are also called blood thinners, as they prevent the formation of blood clots and increase clotting time. There are several different types of anticoagulants. Each type works at a different level in the blood coagulation pathway. There are mainly four types of anticoagulants, coumarines and indindiones, factor XA inhibitors, heparins, and direct thrombin inhibitors. First of all, let's talk about coumarines. Coumarin is derived from the coumarin plant. Now tell me, which is the most significant factor in the coagulation cascade? Yes, of course, vitamin K as factors 2, factor 7, 9, and factor 10, and proteins C and S are all dependent on vitamin K for their synthesis by the liver. The coumarin anticoagulants are potent anticoagulants that inhibit the cofactor function of vitamin K. Warfarin is the most commonly used coumarin in medical practice today and is very useful in the DVT treatment protocol. Warfarin works by limiting the availability of vitamin K, which is responsible for the formation of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, which are responsible for blood coagulation and thus decreasing the blood's ability to clot. So, warfarin is called a vitamin K antagonist. Indandiones have a similar way of working to coumarines, but they are mainly used for pest control to control rat, mouse, and rabbit populations. Now let's talk about the second group, which is factor XA inhibitors. Factor XA inhibitors are also called as direct oral anticoagulants in clinical practice. Factor XA inhibitors work on factor XA in the coagulation cascade, which is responsible for converting the protein prothrombin into thrombin. Factor XA inhibitors can affect factor XA within the blood and also within a pre-existing clot. Factor XA inhibitors work by targeting a specific enzyme in your blood's clotting process. They have fewer side effects than the blood thinner warfarin, which has long been a standard treatment to reduce stroke risk in a FEB. Examples of factor XA include apixaban, patrixaban, adoxaban, and fondaparinux. You get this in a vein or intravenously instead of taking it by mouth and last, rivaroxaban. Next, we will be talking about the most important group in this category, heparin. The heparin group consists of three derivatives, unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin, and heparinoids. Unfractionated heparin, also called heparin, is usually administered by intravenous route. Heparin works by inhibiting thrombin and factor XO which are important factors in the final stages of the coagulation cascade. Perrin may also be called high molecular weight heparin. Perrin is usually administered in an intensive care unit or hospital setup, and daily monitoring is essential while monitoring for signs of bleeding and blood tests such as APT and PTINR. The APT is the speed at which clotting occurs. Next, let's talk about the most important molecule in this class, LMWH or low molecular weight heparin. LMWH is usually administered subcutaneously, like insulin, and it does not require daily monitoring as with heparin. Also, LMWH has a longer half-life in the body than heparin. Parin and LMWH both work as anticoagulants by activating antithrombin, which speeds up the inactivation of the coagulation enzymes thrombin, factor IAA, factor SA, and factor IXA. Because of their predictable action on the body, they do not require daily monitoring as with heparin. LMWH is available in 0.4 ml, or 40 mg, and 0.6 ml, or 60 mg, straight, and doses are decided by physicians accordingly. 
Now let's talk about heparinoids that have a similar action to heparin and are extracted from specific animal and plant tissues or made synthetically. They are usually applied topically and are easily absorbed into the skin, where they can reduce small blood vessels, inflammation, and associated pain and discomfort. Chitin and chondroitin sulfate are also heparinoids. Now, let's talk about the last group in this category, which is direct thrombine inhibitors. They use ingredients similar to a protein from a medicinal leech's saliva, which some discontinued forms of the drug use. Direct thrombin inhibitors bind to thrombin directly, limiting its action. Dezirudin, which binds to both the active enzymatic site and exocyte 1, and argotrobin, which binds to the active enzymatic site exclusively, are examples of direct thrombin inhibitors that must be administered via injection. Dabigatrin is an oral direct thrombin inhibitor that binds to the active enzyme site reversibly. Direct thrombin inhibitors, DTs, are a new class of anticoagulants that bind to thrombin directly and prevent it from interacting with its substrates. The FDA has approved four parenteral DTs, hyrudin and argotrobin, for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, bivalirudin as an alternative to heparin in percutaneous coronary intervention, and desertin for venous thromboembolism prevention in hip replacement. Our adventure doesn't end here. Researchers are continuously exploring new frontiers, like gene therapies and nanotechnology, to revolutionize anticoagulant therapy. The possibilities are infinite. Thank you for joining me today on this enlightening journey through the realm of anticoagulants. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming adventures. Until next time, stay curious, stay healthy, and keep the wonder alive.